Now, this is a rather tricky thing to talk about um, because I was trying to use very, very simple language that a child could understand to explain what are really rather subtle theological, political theological concepts like the notion of sovereignty. And of course, I'll be talking about this a lot more in other sections of the book. But the idea of clowns you know, just fascinated me because um, it does seem to be the case that there are a lot of societies, and I give the examples of, of Pierre del Fuego, a lot of Aboriginal um, First Nations of California, this was the case, uh, they have societies where no one is ever giving anybody orders. You don't even really give orders to children if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, but adults certainly never order each other around, except during rituals. Now, during rituals, gods appear, people give orders, but it's not the gods giving orders, it's the clowns. And the clowns are kind of both the police and the master of ceremony at, and, and the clowns at the same time. You have this crazy scenarios where the clowns are telling people what to do and then they're telling them intentionally wrong or they're doing everything backwards to try to trick people and then penalizing them for doing it wrong. But I realize that this is kind of sovereignty in the raw and the power to give orders and, and make up rules. And the clowns not only enforce rules, they can make up new rules because they're not bound by the rules themselves. You know, so, so when that principle first shows up, it's contained by being made utterly ridiculous. And the California societies, for example, uh, it's the kind of bums who don't really do much work and move from town to town and, have, and beg. They're the guys who are like ordinarily clowns and suddenly you make them king during the ritual. Uh, but it's a way of making sure that nobody who's taken seriously has any chance of getting anywhere near that kind of arbitrary power. Uh, but you can actually see the evolution, uh, especially along the Pacific coast of North America, whereby in California you have these festivals that go on sometimes for a week. Uh, and they're very important and they involve gods coming and you need to do it to save the world. Uh, you have the clowns running uh, things, but the clowns only have this kind of crazy arbitrary authority for a few days. And then they're just going back to being ordinary people or not even of the, or bums even. Whereas among the fuck you of the Northwest Coast uh, and other Northwest Coast people as well, you have a whole winter ritual season that can last two or three months. And during this period, there are groups of people. Everybody has one name in the summer and another name in the winter. Uh, you switch identities when it, the winter ceremonial begins and you, uh, everybody in the summer is actually fighting over who gets access to what important name and who gets to play what role in the dramas of the uh, winter season. But one of the key roles are what they call the fool dancers. And the fool dancers are clowns. Uh, they have giant noses and they're constantly like getting very excited about their noses and blowing their noses on on people and 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 um, they're obsessed with bodily functions and fluids in general and they're also just kind of throwing rocks randomly and messing things up and doing everything wrong and confusing people but they're also the cops um, so if you do something wrong they're the ones who penalize you for example if you accidentally use somebody's summer name in the winter when you're not supposed to they'll like come and throw, throw a rock at you and like penalize you and you have to pay a Martin for whatever it is uh, that people would have to pay it. two blankets money was blankets and so far as they had money back then in, in the northwest coast um, so so you have for three months what seemed to be a clown police. And then that shifts uh, in a lot of societies of the Great Plains um, to having actual police for, for three, four months a year or during the winter ceremonials. They have their ceremony season, which also corresponds to the big buffalo hunt. Huge herds of buffalo and they would like mobilize on the buffalo. But the key thing is to make sure nobody goes off too early and messes it up. So they would have police for three months a year, but otherwise be totally egalitarian and decentralized. And the um, way they did that is they rotated. But so sometimes there would be warrior societies, would be a different one every year, would provide the police. Sometimes each clan would be 24 clans. So every 24 years you get back to the first one. The one thing you don't want is the same guy being the police two years in a row, right? So anybody who's police ne this year knows that like anybody they beat up might be the police next year. So it makes people, you know, not, not take things too far and be too arbitrary about it. But anyway, there are hints here and there 
that there is an association between clowning and ritual policing, but it seems to be something largely forgotten. But um, there are hints that you, know, you have a motion from the, 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 the clown police during the ritual to the clown police, like in the Quakutal during the ritual season, to them turning into an actual police society, which at first rotates and presumably over time in other societies becomes more permanent. So that's one way that sovereignty can, can be contained. It's contained in time, uh, like those princes of the Paleolithic, the dwarf kings and giant kings and hunchbacks and so forth, seem to have only been kings during the season where everybody gets together in the winter, uh, during the ritual season, and then everybody disperses again. Whether they were funny, we don't know.